Hello, Psych2Goers, welcome back. What do you think of when you hear the word depression? Like many, you may imagine someone crying while curled up on the ground, but there's more to it than that. So to help you understand more of what depression really is like, and to debunk some common misconceptions, here are six things people with depression want you to know. Number one, depression has nothing to do with being weak. Many people often equate having a mental illness with being weak, but that's just not true. People who are suffering from depression might not be able to get out of bed every morning or cope with everyday stress, but that doesn't mean they're less worthy. It's easy to confuse their predicament with laziness and call them weak, selfish, or even annoying because you don't see what they're really going through every day. It's important to understand that if your friend can't cheer up like how everyone else does, it's not because of a lack of effort. Fighting against something that can be so overwhelming yet invisible to others is exhausting and taxing to anyone's mental health. Number two, it's important to be aware of their common triggers. People who suffer from depression often know what sets off their dark mood. And so they may avoid certain places or objects in order to protect themselves. If they've previously told you that something specific makes them feel terrible, try to refrain from suggesting any activities that could trigger them and worsen their condition. Don't take this personally either. When your favorite movie night suddenly becomes too much for someone close to you. It's not an attack on you, but a difficult situation where they have no other choice as it's really hard for them too. Number three, don't make them feel like they're wrong if they talk about suicide. In many cultures, suicide is a taboo subject. So many people stray away from talking about it at all. But there's always a reason why some depressed people want to end their life. Many of them may secretly wish to end their lives because they can't imagine living like this for the rest of their lives. Yet, that doesn't mean that every suicidal person wants to act on those thoughts or that people should avoid bringing that topic up. If someone says something along the lines of, I wish I wasn't alive anymore, it doesn't mean you need to tell them they're wrong or to simply ignore their remark. Instead, it may be more helpful to listen to what they have to say. If you or someone else are feeling depressed or contemplating suicide, please remember that you're not alone. We've added a list of suicide hotlines in the description below. Please use them. Number four, do not compare sufferings. Many people often make the mistake of comparing one person's emotional pain to another's physical pain. However, one is caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain while the other is caused by an injury. When you question someone's pain by saying things like, I felt just as bad before and I got over it, you can get over this too, or you should stop feeling so sad. You don't know what real sadness feels like. You're not being helpful and may only be contributing to the stigma surrounding mental illness. Depression isn't something people decide to have. Nobody wants to suffer from depression, trust me. And it has nothing to do with being weak, lazy, or too free. For those who are not affected by this illness, understand that it takes a lot of strength to deal with the pain every single day. And just living their lives often ends up being more difficult than it might seem from the outside. Number five, do not judge their way of coping. For some, talking about their feelings is what helps them most, but others might need something different, no matter how strange it seems. If someone told you they feel better if they write songs all night long, then let them even if you think there's another way that is more helpful or logical. Sometimes you might need to step back, knowing that there is no one true cure for everybody. And number six, give them space. No matter how much someone likes spending time with others, it can become mentally draining for someone with depression when there's too much social contact, such as gatherings and phone conversations. You might find that they need to be alone in order to regain some of their strength, this doesn't mean that they're withdrawing from the world or that they don't like you or don't want to engage with you anymore. Instead of trying to push them into hanging out or talking with you constantly, respect their wishes and give them as much space as they need in order to come back full of energy and ready for whatever's ahead. What are your experiences with people with depression? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever it's like to go post a new video. The references and studies used in this video are added in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.